it is an enormous privilege to be alive right now and to be a part of this movement. And it's a very difficult time. I don't deny that at all. I look at it more as a birth pain. That here is this change that's occurring and we're coming down the birth canal and there's blood around and it's a difficult process. But it's a birth that is occurring. It's not a death. And I think that when future humans look back on this era from several hundred years in the future, they will not remember this time as one when we squandered the resources of the planet, when we destroyed our planet essentially. They'll look at this as an extraordinary moment in time when we developed the basic uh, technologies, the, the basis for their societies. We developed genetic engineering, the ability to basically rework our own genetic blueprint, which is something unprecedented. It's never happened in three and a half billion years of history. We began to move out into space for three and a half billion years. Life, all of life has been constrained to this thin film on the surface of the planet. And now, quite suddenly, in just an instant in time, we're moving out towards the universe. And the third thing that has occurred in our era is artificial intelligence, computers. Suddenly, non-living material is beginning to achieve a level of complexity that rivals that of life itself. So these are three things that are absolutely unprecedented in the history of life. And they're occurring now. And is it any surprise that this is something that is jarring and shaking up the environment and causing extinctions? This is going to provide the basis, not just for the next hundred years, but for thousands of years, tens of thousands, if not millions of years. And I see a long future stretching out ahead. Some people are already preparing to become part of this transhuman era. One of them is Terence McKenna, an ethnobotanist who studied shamanism in the Amazons. According to McKenna, to get ready for a future life where we will live uploaded in computers, we must first prepare ourselves mentally. The best way to do so, he believes, is through the use of psychedelic drugs. In a sense, this historical crisis or this singularity that we're approaching is like a transition from a low dimensional world, say a world of two or three dimensions, to a world of four, five or six dimensions. This is what I believe actually happens to a human uh, brain-mind system under the influence of psychedelics. So in a way, the best practice for the uh, approaching singularity is the repeated dissolving and reconstituting of one's personality through the use of psychedelic uh, substances. This is one of the most interesting new psychedelics in the world. This is salvia divinorum and uh, it is definitely one of the plants which will shape the next few decades of the new millennium. This is a coleus. It's ironic that these plants, which have been in our kitchens and in our windowsill flower beds for generations, turn out to contain psychoactive compounds as powerful as any known to science. These are not particularly interesting in terms of drugs, but they're certainly bizarre. When I take psychedelics, I always do it in a shamanic style, usually at night, usually alone, in nature if possible, and then I watch. I pay very close attention. I use my mind as an alchemical vessel for carrying out observations on the union of spirit, my spirit, my personality, and matter, the physical matter of the substance that I'm ingesting. Nothing in human experience is as much like the singularity as a psychedelic experience. In a way, it's a microcosmic anticipation of this macrocosmic event in history. Uh, when we take psychedelics, we undergo a mini 
apocalypse, a mini revelation, and it positions us then for these larger events in the historical time stream. I'd like to climb up here, we may. This is one of the most interesting plants in the garden. This is Cicotria viridis. This is the plant which causes the vision. When taken with ayahuasca, when taken as a liquid, the experience lasts about four to six hours. It's not as intense as smoking it. Smoking it is the most intense experience this side of the yawning grave. When you can see the future, it is a very difficult thing to deal with the idea that we are, in fact, one of the last generations that will live a normal human lifespan. And there's a tendency for us, therefore, to want these things to occur more rapidly than they may actually occur. This is the number one intellectual challenge, namely, you get to rejuvenate yourself. Now, how much is that worth? That's worth a great deal of money. As a matter of fact, when you get people my age, it's worth all the money that they have. I don't think people live long enough right now. It takes 50 years to understand modern mathematics. We're into life extension. Bottom line, we don't want to die. It's not a question of will we, it's a question of when will we have in our hands the interventions at the molecular level, at the genetic level, that will truly extend the human lifespan uh, perhaps uh, hundreds of years into the future. The only thing that you have to do is stay alive! That is all you have to do! I'm not sure what methods are actually going to work. But if you and I are going to live until those methods become available, we had better do everything that we can to protect ourselves by making sure that we have a healthy lifestyle. And that includes eating the proper foods, taking your vitamins and mineral supplements, and it includes exercise, and everybody needs to have approximately a half hour a day of exercise and stress reduction because stress is another way that you can certainly reduce your your lifespan doing those three things in different ways are a critical part of what i call the bridge plan the plan or recommendations that you need to adopt in your life in order to bridge yourself from where you are now until the time in which all of these wonderful scientific medical interventions will become possible. Some people say, you know, if we live for a thousand years or even two hundred years, we will have nothing to do, we will get bored, and, you know, there will, it will be pointless. And I say, well, first of all, how do we know? You know, maybe we'll, maybe we'll get bored, maybe we won't. If we do, we can always just stop taking the medicines, or we can, you know, jump off a cliff or whatever. But 